manifestation of your heart is what determines the manifestation of God's hand. God will respond to you on the basis of your expectation. Where there is no expectation, there will be no visitation. This is so important. So it's important for us to understand that you must define your expectation. What are you expecting to see take place? Whether your prayer is for yourself as an individual, whether it is for standing the gap for others, whether it is the advancement of the kingdom of God, let your expectation be defined. Let it be clear. God's servant has shared how some, time, some years ago he stood at the covenant hour prayer and said, Lord, give me 1,000 souls this week. Give me a thousand souls this week. Give me a thousand souls this week. A prayer that seems so unattainable. But suddenly, because there was a defined expectation, there was a heavenly visitation. And that week for the first time, a thousand souls came in, in a go, in the week, in his outreaches. Your expectation must be defined. Your expectation must be defined. Number two vital requirement for you to experience the turnaround God on the altar of prayer is anchor your desire on his word. The word of God is what gives you a right with God. Until you anchor on his word, your prayer is without basis. The altar of prayer is not an altar of sentiment. It is an, it's an altar of engagement. And you engage with God on the basis of his terms. First John chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. The Bible tells us there. It says this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. And what is his will? His word. He heareth us. He says and if we know that he hears us. Then whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. So God makes it very clear. If you are going to have, you know, answers from the turn around God on the altar of prayer, you must anchor your desire on the basis of his word. The word of God must be the foundation. Whatever God says in his word is committed to. Numbers 23 verse 19, he said, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? He says, has he spoken and will he not make it good? Anything that God says is committed to perform. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 16, all the way down to verse 18, the Bible tells us there. Hebrews 6 verse 16 to 18. It says, for men very swear by the greater. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. He said, God willing therefore more abundantly to show to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. So that by two immutable things it was impossible for God to lie. And we may be able to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. So we can anchor our expectation on God's word. Whatever God says, God is bound to perform. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why if you watch here very well, you will discover every prayer point is back with a scripture. Why? It is the heavenly protocol. When it is based on his word, God is bound by his word. Number three, engage your heart to approach unto God. Engage your heart. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 21, the Bible says, who is this that has engaged his heart? Has engaged his heart to approach unto me. It always takes the heart. Until your heart is engaged in prayer, God is not interested. In the book of Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 10, the Bible says, I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins to give unto every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God responds to the connectivity of our heart. God responds to the connectivity of our heart. My prayer is that from this day onward, your heart will never be disconnected again. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Number four, engage your faith on the altar of prayer. Engage your faith on the altar of prayer. Matthew 21 and verse 22, it says, And all things soever that you desire in prayer, when you pray in prayer, believe in, it said, you shall receive. 
all things. So where faith is present, God is responsive. It is faith that gives you connectivity with God. Faith. Faith. It gives you connectivity with God. Where there is no faith, there is bad network. You call, it's not going through. But when there is faith, there is clear network. Everything you are saying, God is hearing and God is responding to. From today, God will keep responding to you. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. I said, somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. I've shared before how a number of years ago, 2008 to be precise, as we God's servant, our father, and he looked at me and said, David, I know God hears me when I pray. I know God hears me when I pray. I can never forget it. When I heard that statement, I went and sat down. I said, what is it that will make somebody talk like this? I know God, because I know there are many people who are not sure when they pray whether God heard. They are not sure. But he looked with a, with a, with a sight of certainty. I know that God hears me when I pray. You see, when you approach God with the certainty of faith, you are certain to come out with an answer. From this day onward, your faith will never fail again. I said your faith will never fail again. Number five, engage the power of thanksgiving to secure the answer. When you go to the altar of prayer, your entry is with gratitude. Your exit is with thanksgiving. You enter into his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Psalm 100 and verse 4. So clearly from scriptures, there is a protocol for God's presence. There's a protocol for God's presence. You enter with your expectation, but if you will exit with his manifestation, you will require thanksgiving. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible tells us there, be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. From today, your prayers will never lack answers. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. As we begin to wrap up this morning, what are the facilitators of turnarounds on the altar of prayer? Two things, and then we are going to pray. Number one, sanctification. We heard about it yesterday, and also heard about it also in the prayer, Shiloh prayer hour this morning. Sanctification. John chapter 9 verse 31. And we know that God heareth not sinners. And we know that God heareth not sinners. When sin is allowed to fester, God is disconnected. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2, the, eyes, the hand of the Lord is not short that he can't save. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear, but your iniquity has put a gap between you and me that I'm not able to hear or save. God cannot be connected when a life is not sanctified, separated unto him. Sanctification is a vital necessity. Some years ago, I was privileged to be walking I'm doing some work with our technical team here and I saw something for the first time as at that time, a number of years ago. I got there to the studio and I saw them isolating voices. The choir was singing isolating voices on the, on the mixer board. And they would silence certain voices and pick one. And only that voice would be heard. They would pick others. They would drop one. Only that voice would be heard. And I discovered that no matter how you sing on the mic, what is heard is determined by the one that is on the master board. No matter how much noise you make in prayer, what is heard by God is the one that is, is determined by the one on the master board. And what does he do on the master board when he sees iniquity? Silence. So you can scream and scream, but your voice is not heard. That's why I said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. There's a mixer in heaven. God says, Silence. That one cannot be heard again. But your own voice will be heard from now. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. Finally, number two, number two key for you to enjoy turnarounds on the altar of prayer is have a heart for God. Confirmed, God's attention for you is retained. All things will always work together for good to them that love God. From today, your prayers will we begin to secure heavenly turnarounds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise on your feet with me this morning. Lift your hand to heaven. Lord, I receive this morning a fresh release of the spirit of grace and supplication. 
pray that prayer from the depth of your heart right now. I receive, O oh Lord, a fresh release of the spirit of grace and supplication upon my life. My prayer life will never be dampened again. Lord, my prayer life shall be on fire from today. Lift your voice and pray that prayer right now. I receive upon my life a fresh release of the spirit of grace and supplication. My prayer life will never go down again. It will keep going from grace to grace, from strength to strength, and from glory to glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' precious name. From this day onward, your prayer life and your prayer altar shall be on fire. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. We are going to celebrate God. The choir will be leading us as we give God the glory together. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise.